The book is written as a result of my shock, my horror, my sadness, and my anger at what is happening in historic Palestine. What I saw in the West Bank on that summer was my people in my name, supposedly to keep me safe, dispossessing and humiliating another people. I saw that it had been going on for generations. I saw that it was continuing. I saw that there were no breaks on it. And I realized that is why there is no peace. I knew that until we Jews looked in the mirror, saw what we were doing, and decided to stop that, that there would never be peace, there would never be security for my family in Israel, there would never be justice for the Palestinians who have lost their land and are being driven off their ancestral farms. I saw all that. I realized it had to change. I came home and realized that the American people needed to know what was going on. That's why I wrote the book. I really didn't know what to do as a result of that experience. It was pretty shattering. Uh, I found myself more comfortable uh, in East Jerusalem with the Palestinians than in West Jerusalem with the Jews. Uh, I found myself questioning the very basis of Zionism and the whole Zionist project, which, again, I had grown up with. It was part of my religious upbringing. So I really had a, a real crisis, a personal crisis. You know, did it mean I wasn't a Jew anymore? I mean, what did this mean that I was so upset about and opposed to what Israel was doing, again, uh, purportedly to protect me? So I returned to the United States not knowing what I was going to do with this experience and with the feelings that I was having. And a very dramatic thing happened. The Jewish community that I had grown up in didn't want to hear about it. Um, I was accused of being anti-Semitic, of being a self-hating Jew, of opening the door to the next Holocaust. You weren't supposed to talk about this. It was not okay. But then something else happened. Again, very dramatic and to me, very surprising. I started to speak in front of Christian groups and in churches, and the doors flung open. Christians wanted to hear about this. I was talking about Palestinians being oppressed, being driven off their lands, uh, not, ha not having full civil rights in their society, and for Christians, this was a no-brainer. Well, we have to do something about it. There was only one problem. For the last 60 years, since World War II, Christians here in the United States and probably across the rest of the world have been involved in a very, very purposeful, very committed, very passionate project to reconcile with the Jewish people for 2,000 years of anti-Semitism that resulted in the Nazi Holocaust. Christians, having seen the ovens and seen what resulted from anti-Semitism, from Christian anti-Semitism, have been involved in a project to reconcile with the Jewish people and to really atone for that evil. And that's a good thing. But what it has also meant is, I discovered, that uh, you can't say anything bad about Israel. You know, Israel was given to the Jewish people, the state of Israel was given to the Jewish people to make up for the Holocaust. In fact, to make up for 2,000 years of dispossession and getting kicked around by the rest of the world. So how can you now say to the Jewish people, well, uh, everything is not right with Israel. You shouldn't be doing that. You need to withdraw from those territories. You need to live in peace with the Palestinians. You need to be fair to them. You need to let them go back to their homes that, they were kicked, that you kicked them out of in 1948. You can't say that. So as a Jew, I'm coming to the church, and I'm saying, you know what? I love Israel. My grandfather was born in Israel. Half my family lives there. I think it's a terrific place, and I am heartbroken about what's happening to it. 
And I am telling you that if you really want to be friends to the Jewish people, call Israel to account. It is not anti-Semitic to do that until we confront the Christian reluctance to challenge Israel or to say anything to Jews besides, we're really sorry and we really want to make this up to you, we're not going to get anywhere in this country in changing United States policy toward Israel and in making peace with the Middle East. And so I wrote four chapters about that. You know, why are Christians involved in atonement for anti-Semitism? What does that mean now? And frankly, what do you do when your Jewish son-in-law or daughter-in-law tells you you can't talk about it? Well, what you do is you start to talk about it. It's a fatal embrace. Jews feel that because of the history of oppression and dispossession, they have the right to dispossess another people and colonize historic Palestine. Christians feel that because they are responsible for 2,000 years of anti-Semitism resulting in the Holocaust, that they have no right to hold Israel to account or to challenge the Jewish people about anything that the Jewish people may be doing wrong. That's a fatal embrace. As long as both of those groups are locked into those attitudes and behave according to those beliefs, we will never, ever fix the problem and find a way to peace in the Holy Land. That's what the book is about.